And this particular tea, again, it's been utilized for centuries, has a notable effect on supporting the health of our liver, reducing hepatic fat, and also improving overall insulin sensitivity. Consumption of various teas dates back thousands of years from locations all over the globe. For centuries, the benefits of drinking tea has been documented. Today, modern science is affirming some remarkable benefits from a variety of teas. And that's what we'll be covering today. We're going to start off with a tea that has some astonishing connections to longevity. Residing in the mountainous regions of Gaizu in southern China, famous for its sheer amount of centarians, people living to be 100 years old and beyond. This tea, commonly called gynostema, but it's also known as jiao gu lan in Chinese or sometimes referred to as southern ginseng, this tea has mountains of peer-reviewed data affirming its benefits on our metabolic health and more. A randomized, double-blind, placebo-controlled clinical trial published in the journal Obesity tracked the metabolic changes of 80 obese test subjects for 12 weeks. Versus the group who received the placebo, the study participants who incorporated gynostema tea lost significantly more abdominal fat, lost more overall body fat, lost more weight, and had a greater reduction in their body mass index with no other change except implementing gynostema tea into their regimen. Another peer-reviewed study. This one found that gynostema can actually improve the activity of AMP activated protein kinase, or AMPK, if you're nasty, demonstrating its muscle protective effects. One of the things most noted in peer-reviewed data when we set out on a conventional calorie restriction, AKA weight loss protocol, is a loss of our lean body mass, AKA losing muscle. And when we're losing our muscle, our muscle is really our body's metabolic furnace and it has the capacity to actually burn more caloric energy just by having more of it muscle is really expensive for our bodies to carry and so losing our muscle as we're trying to lose weight we're going to inherently be re reducing our metabolic rate overall and that's something we don't want to do so gynostem has been found to protect our muscle through the process of weight loss and so that's what we really want. And going back to the study published in the journal Obesity, we're actually losing more body fat by utilizing gynostema versus losing our valuable lean muscle tissue. And yet another randomized, blinded, controlled clinical trial published in the journal Alternative Therapies in Health and Medicine found that gynostema can actually improve our insulin sensitivity and reduce levels of hepatic fat, AKA liver fat. You don't wanna be walking around with them fat livers, all right? Non-alcoholic fatty liver disease has absolutely skyrocketed in our society today. It's one of the leading causes of death and dysfunction today, and it's not really being talked about. And this particular tea, again, it's been utilized for centuries, has a notable effect on supporting the health of our liver, reducing hepatic fat, and also improving overall insulin sensitivity. And insulin resistance is one of the leading drivers of non-alcoholic fatty liver disease where our bodies are just trying to do what it can do to adapt to inordinate amounts of sugar exposure, of glucose roaming around in our bloodstreams. And so our liver is really taking on the weight of that situation. And so being able to support insulin sensitivity and liver health overall, this is going to dramatically improve our health outcomes. And there's even a paper featured on the American Diabetes Association website that again, most people have no idea about. This is again, one of the premier organizations dedicated to our epidemics of diabetes in our society today. On their website, the paper is titled, Major Anti-Diabetic Effect of Gynostema Tea in Patients with Type 2 Diabetes. It's in the title. But how often do you hear about gynostema tea having anti-diabetic benefits? As a matter of fact, this is another randomized, double-blind, 
placebo-controlled 12-week clinical trial, gold standard, measuring a huge array of biomarkers for these diabetic patients. Notably, the researcher stated, quote, fasting glucose promptly decreased after just one week of treatment with gynostema. At the end of the 12-week study period, the researchers concluded, quote, the results of the study show a prompt improvement of glycemia and insulin sensitivity and thereby provide a basis for a novel, effective, and safe approach to treat type 2 diabetic patients, unquote. Come on! It's been around for thousands of years, utilized so much efficacy, and now we have mountains of peer-reviewed data to affirm this, but you're not going to hear this promoted through major media outlets. You're not going to hear this promoted through conventional, quote, standard of care treatments. But this is something that we all have access to. And so gynostema tea, this is a beautiful green tea leaf that has been prized for its health supportive benefits and its natural hints of light sweetness. This is actually a delicious tea. Now for myself personally, I grew up, I only knew about one kind of tea. I knew about sweet tea. That was it, sweet tea. And when Lipton Brisk hit the scene, so this was like, you can buy it in a can. The tea actually, it had so much sugar in it, it was almost frosted. It was like a frosted tea. And so to learn about these different teas over the years, you know, I've had 20 years now of experience in the field of health and fitness, and I'm so grateful for staying curious and asking questions, and most importantly, experimenting and utilizing these things. So Gynostem has been something that I've been a fan of for about 15 years now. And I'm glad that I get an opportunity to talk about this in a masterclass really revolving around the storied traditions of tea utilization from cultures all over the world and also looking at the latest peer-reviewed published clinical trial data. So that's just number one here. We're going to go through 10 remarkable teas, again, from places all over the world. And we're starting off with gynostema. Next up, we're going to go into one of my all-time favorite teas. This one is called Pu'er. Pu'er is a fermented tea with a long history of use within regions in and around China. Today, Pu'er is well-respected for its profound benefits on metabolism and overall health. According to a study published in the journal Phytonutrient Research, Pu'er is one of the rare nutrient sources that has a direct significant influence on the enzyme that actually unlocks our fat cells to be able to utilize their contents for energy. And this hormone is called hormone sensitive lipase. So this is one of the few things ever discovered, Pu'er, that acts upon that enzyme to get your fat cells to let go of its goodies. All right. So Pu'er is an effective adjunct to protocols today that have become more popular like intermittent fasting because of its ability to support fat loss while protecting our muscle mass at the same time. And this is documented in a recent study featured in the journal Clinical Interventions in Aging. So again, looking at the phenomenon of aging and also sarcopenia related and the loss of muscle over time and finding, again, this is what this science, this journal is dedicated to, is talking about these subjects and finding something in Pu'er, again, thousands of years, of documented use to be able to be protective and help to prevent muscle loss over time. Really remarkable. And to take this another step further, in that same vein as protection against the onset of some of the things we attribute to aging, Pu'er has also been found to be a very, very effective free radical scavenger, AKA antioxidant rich substance as well and helping to eliminate cellular waste products that build up the bioaccumulation of waste products. That's another thing attributed to abnormal aging. In particular, if we're looking at conditions like Alzheimer's disease and the inability of the brain to eliminate waste over time. Also, it has some really profound benefits for our gut microbiome. And the gut microbiome is having a moment right now in health and wellness. And I'm very grateful for that. But oftentimes we're getting an incomplete picture about what we can actually do to improve the health of our microbiome. 
Now, obviously, our food choices play a huge role because it is the substrate. It is the, the input. It is the prebiotic that is going to determine which bacteria are going to be able to proliferate in our gut and also just remain around, period. You know, which one are you feeding? What are you feeding? Now, when I say which one, I'm talking about this story of the two wolves that reside within all of us, you know, and it's really there's the the bad wolf and then there's the good wolf. And this is being very simplistic in this. There's so much more to this. Even this whole good and bad thing, This there's analogies with that in every culture as well, even the yin and yang paradigm. There's good within the cons what's considered to be the bad and there's bad what's in to be considered the good. And so we don't want to get too black or white in our thinking, but truly we do get to choose with our attention and intention what we're feeding, right? Whether it's with our psychology or whether it's with our microbiome. And there are thousands of different species of microbes and many, many more that have yet to be discovered. And we know that our food quality, the choice in what we're eating has a huge influence. And so the biggest key here with our microbiome health is diversity. Diversity is the hallmark of a healthy microbiome. And the number one driver of diversity is diversity in food substrates. It's a diversity in food inputs from a variety of different foods. Diversity from our microbiome is gonna come from diversity in the foods that we're eating. And even if we're eating healthy or what we determine to be healthy for ourselves in our society today, it tends to be on repeat. We start eating the same things we've distinguished to be healthy over and over and over again versus adding in new foods like our ancestors would eat depending upon what nature was providing during various seasons. And so that aspect and also convenience aspect today, we're, we're losing the diversity in food inputs, but also in our beverages. And the reason that I wanted to do this masterclass today was because coming in a liquid form, it is delivered to our cells far more efficiently and far faster because it's in this liquid medium. The same holds true with things like soda, you know, negative liquid mediums hitting our system and creating disruption. And so using this medium for our good, using this medium for our benefit is something I really want to inspire in everyone today. And so when it comes to the microbiome, adding in something like this, in addition to improving our food quality, a recent study published in the peer-reviewed journal Nature Communications uncovered that a unique compound called Thea Brownin, Thea Brownin, found in fermented puer, has some remarkable effects on our microbiome. The researchers found that Thea Brownin positively alters gut microbiota that directly reduces excessive hepatic fat, again, we're talking about liver fats again, and reduces lipogenesis, lipo meaning fat, genesis, meaning creation, all right? Reducing the creation of fat, pretty cool. Now, again, this study is affirming that it's creating positive shifts in our microbiome that helps to support liver function and metabolic health. Another study, this was published in the Journal of Agricultural and Food Chemistry, found that puer may be able to reverse gut dysbiosis by dramatically reducing ratios of potentially harmful bacteria and increasing ratios of beneficial bacteria. So really creating a, sh a shift, a positive alteration in our overall microbiome makeup, right? So gut dysbiosis has been on the rise for the last couple of decades as well. And just people dealing with all manner of digestive issues today in the United States, and this is according to data, you know, even cited by the NIH, for example, affirming that about 70 million Americans now have some form of a digestive disorder. Right, this is a huge chunk of our population, and this is not normal. This is something that is only recently becoming more and more prevalent. And so these are some simple solutions to add to the mix, but as with anything that we're gonna talk about today, we don't wanna just run out like, pu'er, pu'er, we gotta find that pu'er on the streets. Gynostemma, let me get that quality matters and at the end of the episode we're going to talk about some of the truly scary things in a lot of these teas out here on store shelves that you need to know about and so making sure that you're getting these from high quality sources who care about 
obviously care about the quality of the tea itself, but taking it a step further to help you to avoid many of the toxicants that are found in teas, something that can be so healthy, really gets screwed up in the process, in the, in the deliverables of it, by some of the things we're gonna talk about at the end of the episode. But for Pu'er, this is again, one of my favorite teas. The Pu'er that I utilize is from a cold extraction process to really retain the nutrients and the polyphenols in it. And also they're utilizing wild harvested Pu'er. So the concentration of these micronutrients is just remarkable. It's so resilient, it's really an adaptogen. In addition to that, it's triple toxin screened for purity ensuring that we're not getting pesticides, heavy metals, toxic molds that are commonly found in teas today. And I'm talking about the Pu'er from Peak Life. Go and check them out for sure. Go to peaklife.com forward slash model. They're actually gonna provide you with 15% off and free shipping on their Pu'er bundles. Plus for a limited time, you're also gonna get a free quiver, a quiver, a little, little satchel, of 12 tea samples so you can actually try out some of their other delicious award-winning teas as well now these tea bundles have never been discounted before so definitely take advantage of it go to peaklife.com forward slash model that's p-i-q-u-e-l-i-f-e.com forward slash model again 50 percent off and free shipping for life on their puer bundles plus for a limited time get a sample pack with 12 samples. Now, as noted, Pu'er has some remarkable benefits for our overall metabolic health, but also the health of our microbiome and so much more. But we're going to move on to number three here on our list of top 10 teas. Now, this is tough to make this list. I could shift this list around many times, you know, as gets into this debate about what's best. And these aren't any particular order, but these are teas with a variety of benefits, but also looking at Moving from teas that have caffeine, for example, to teas that are not caffeinated, that are more kind of family friendly, that are utilized by people who might have issues going on with their nervous system, for example. And so I want to make sure that everybody's invited to this tea party. And so we're going to add in now a tea that is caffeine free, that has roots native to Southern Africa. And this tea is called rooibos. Rooibos tea has been utilized for centuries as a health-giving drink. And unlike many other teas that sometimes have an acquired taste to them, rooibos tea has a slightly sweet flavor with subtle hints of vanilla. This caffeine-free fermented tea has been found to improve our insulin sensitivity and even block the creation of new fat cells. And this is detailed in a recent study published in the journal Phytomedicine. Rooibos is also protective of our muscle tissue. Scientists at the Tokyo University of Agriculture and Technology discovered that a compound in rooibos called asphalothin stimulates glucose uptake into our muscle cells and positively influences glucose homeostasis in the body. Our muscle cells can be like a sponge to sop up excess glucose in our bloodstream rather than it getting stored as fat, All right? But we need our muscle, we need to have muscle on our frame, absolutely, but also to essentially increase the sensitivity of the muscles to glucose versus that sensitivity for our fat cells to try to sop up the glucose in our bloodstreams. So it's pretty remarkable that it's creating this kind of preferential guidance system for our muscles to utilize glucose over our fat cells. And to top it off, some varieties of rooibos have the potential to be great for your brain and mental health as well. A 2022 study cited in the journal Food and Function demonstrates the potential for rooibos to reduce anxiety and provide neuroprotection against stress. All right, now we're gonna move on to number four here. Next up, we've got, you know them, you love them, green tea. But we're gonna take a look at green tea in a way that you have never seen before. Consumption of green tea dates back 6,000 years in China. 
but it wasn't consumed in the way that we know today. It was actually eaten more like a vegetable. All right, people were chewing on tea leaves. They were mixing them into like grain bowls and concoctions like that. The shift from utilizing this particular plant as food over to it being consumed as a beverage happened about 1500 years ago. The Camellia sinensis plant has thousands of years of documented history, but our peer reviewed data today is showing so many different benefits on a variety of different systems in the human body. A study published in the Journal of Health Science uncovered that antioxidants in green tea called catechins are able to increase the rate at which our body uses fat for fuel. Another study, and this one was reported in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition, found that study participants who had a green tea extract before exercise burned 17% more fat than those who didn't. The researchers noted a greater improvement in insulin sensitivity for the test subjects as well, utilizing the green tea extract. And this highlights the fact that green tea and exercise go hand in hand. They really, really work synergistically together. An additional study, this was published in the journal Physiology and Behavior, sought to find out the results when green tea is utilized in obese volunteers. At the end of the 12-week study, participants having green tea each day lost 7.3 more pounds and burned 183 more calories per day than test subjects who did not utilize green tea. This one intervention, adding this into the mix, and here's what's most impressive about the study is that all the test subjects received three meals a day from the hospital facilitating the study. They're eating the same thing, but one group is utilizing green tea and one isn't. Every test subject received meals that were calorically equal, yet those who included green tea lost more weight and lost more body fat. The sweet spot indicated in these clinical trials is about two to four cups a day for optimal benefits. Yes, green tea has some phenomenal benefits for our metabolic health, but something that makes it truly outstanding are its anti-cancer benefits. A study published in the journal Breast Cancer Research and Treatment found that women who drank the most green tea had an approximately 20 to 30 percent lower risk of developing breast cancer. Now, this is an observational study, but they did a great job of addressing confounding factors and found that green tea consumption really stood out for its potential in reducing the risk of cancer. Now, a meta-analysis of 29 studies published in the peer-reviewed journal OncoTarget, an oncology-focused journal found that people who drink green tea daily were around 42% less likely to develop colorectal cancer. This is one of the fastest growing cancers in our society. And green tea has something to say about that. It's interesting that when we have these problems occur, nature has a solution for us and it presents itself. There can't be a problem without a solution. It's two sides of the same coin. The problem inherently brings up, the it, it births the solution along with it. But we often have to change our way of thinking in order to access or to acknowledge that the solution exists, right? And this goes back to Einstein. Lots of people have heard variations of this, but doing the same thing over and over again, expecting a different result is one of his tenets that has been popularized. But another one is, trying to solve a problem from the same level of thinking that created the problem is insanity as well. We have to change the way that we're thinking. And so often we have a problem, we try to bang away at it with the same blunt instrument. And through our standard of care today, it's a cut, burn, poison paradigm. And not many tools of real health affirming health supportive nature, to create a body that is more resilient, to create a body that has more intelligent, functional cellular communication. 
and informing people, empowering people with understanding what cancer actually is, you know, because oftentimes in our world today, it's considered to be something that's idiopathic. Like we don't, there's no cause. We don't know how this happened. Then that's abandoning basic tenets of physics, which just in, in the way that our universe is constructed, maybe we pop over to another universe, it's different, okay? But in this universe, we have principles of causality. Cause and effect, everything has a cause. We see the effects, but then we're like, ah, idiopathic, we don't know, has no effect. It's just, it just happened. How disempowering is that? Today we know that there are lists of pages and pages and pages of hundreds of verified carcinogens newly invented in our society that the average person is exposed to on a daily basis. What do you think is going to happen? It's a carcinogen, cancer-causing agent, stacking conditions against our cellular communication. You know, and seeing a cancer cell manifest, that process of cellular replication and reaching the hay flick limit where that process is supposed to stop. Program cell death, apoptosis, but the cancer cells, this mutation takes place where it's just like, you know what? I'm not going to listen to you. I'm not going to listen. I want to live. I want to live forever. And developing angiogenesis, right? A, a nutrient supply to keep itself going, this kind of zombie cell phenomenon. We had wonderful conversations with the president of the angiogenesis foundation, for example, out of Harvard, Dr. William Lee, and studying anti-angiogenesis therapies primarily through food and these remarkable compounds found in food that have selective intelligence to cut off the nutrient supply to cancer cells we're going to talk about one of those today actually one of those proven sources of anti-angiogenesis properties and communication and therapy for our cells all right now moving on we looked at green tea's benefit for our metabolic health for its anti-cancer properties, but I would be remiss if I didn't talk about green tea in relationship to our brain health and cognitive function. Green tea contains a unique amino acid called L-theanine. It's one of the rare nutrients that's actually able to gracefully waltz its way past the blood-brain barrier and enter the brain and influence activity. And L-theanine is able to increase the activity of the neurotransmitter GABA which helps to reduce anxiety and make you feel more centered and relaxed. Now, another way that L-theanine works to improve our focus is noted in the peer-reviewed journal, Brain Topography. The researchers observed that L-theanine intake increases the frequency of our alpha brain waves, indicating reduced stress, enhanced focus, and even increased creativity. Right, being in that alpha brain wave state, that's more attributed to being in a state of flow, right? We can have stress going on in the world and we can interact with that stress, but we are more calm, we are more focused and better able to interact with that stress to really bring our best selves to the table. And so green tea really has this kind of remarkable interaction with our brain and helping to incite these alpha brain waves. Now the same thing holds true, especially with green tea, all right, because it's one of the most accessible of the teas that we're going to cover today. Quality matters. And yes, green tea is remarkable, in particular if we're talking about L-theanine, but there are certain types of green tea that are even more effective. We're talking about, for example, with the influence on our brain health. One of those would be matcha green tea. And matcha green tea is actually shaded 35% longer, which increases its L-theanine content to support our brain health. And again, I'm going to direct you to Peak Life for their matcha green tea. It's amazing. It is so amazing. It's actually crafted by a Japanese tea master. And there's only like a dozen of these folks in the entire world. All right, so this is special. This is special in the Japanese tea ceremony, right? So they go above and beyond. And it is the only matcha that is quadruple toxin screened for purity. There's no preservatives, no added sugar, no artificial whatever, no artificial sweeteners, just the highest quality matcha 
on the planet. All right, peaklife.com forward slash model. You get access to all their teas. The Pu'er is there, of course, but just drop down box, check out their matcha, and I think you're absolutely going to be in love once you have it. Now, moving on, we're going to look at one of the other most popular teas in the entire world. And this tea actually comes from the same place as green tea, the same plant, Camellia sinensis plant. But the way that it is crafted makes all the difference in the world in its appearance and also some of its influence on our health. Black tea. Again, it actually comes from the same plant as green tea. And like green tea, black tea has been prized for thousands of years in cultures throughout the world. What makes the two teas different in their appearance and benefits is due to fermentation. To make black tea, the leaves are first rolled and then exposed to air to trigger the fermentation process. This reaction causes the leaves to turn dark brown and allows the flavors to heighten and intensify. Plus, it creates a change in the micronutrient profile as well. A group of polyphenols found in higher concentration in black tea called tea flavins appear to have some remarkable benefits on our metabolism. Research cited in the Journal of Functional Foods revealed that black tea tea flavins have the ability to literally shift human gene expression to a profile that favors lipolysis, which is the release of fatty acids from our fat cells, and beta oxidation, meaning that fat actually gets burned for fuel. We can release fat all day from the fat cells, but it can get reabsorbed. Most fat does. Now you might release a little bit from your belly and it winds up on your booty, all right? We want the fat cell to release the contents, but also use it for fuel. That's beta oxidation. So black tea has been found to shift our gene expression to a profile, right? So it's an epigenetic influence that changes the way that our body operates as a whole to a state that is more efficient at unlocking our fat cells to release their contents and to actually burn that fat. In addition to this, scientists at the University of Oslo in Norway conducted a double-blind placebo-controlled study that gave participants either three cups of black tea each day or three cups of a caffeine-matched control beverage. At the end of the three months, the participants drinking the black tea lost significantly more weight and had a greater reduction in waist circumference. So it's not just about the caffeine, right? Caffeine does incite the release of catecholamines that can then go and cleave off these fatty acids from our fat cells. Absolutely. But is that going to mean that they're going to get utilized? And is that the only mode of action with something like black tea and green tea? Is it just the caffeine? No, it's something else going on there. And it has to do with their inherent micronutrients as well and antioxidants, especially. Now, another fascinating thing about black tea is that even though it has caffeine that temporarily stimulates catecholamines, which are stress-related hormones, overall, black tea has been found to actually reduce stress levels. A study published in the peer-reviewed journal Psychopharmacology found that drinking four cups of black tea each day for six weeks directly lowered cortisol levels in test subjects versus those drinking a placebo beverage. In the study, Volunteers who drank black tea had 20% lower blood levels of cortisol after a stressful event compared with the control group. It made them more adaptable. It made them more resilient by utilizing black tea in their regimen. And that's what we really want because we're not going to be able to avoid stress in our world today. We want to be more resilient. We want to be able to bounce back. We want to be more adaptable to said stress, to really not just to survive, but to thrive, to find an opportunity to get better. Now, moving on, all right, so this is number six we're going to touch on now. There's another tea that I want to mention because it doesn't get as much attention as its green and black tea leaf mates. 
All right, this tea comes from Camellia sinensis as well, from the same tea leaves. And this tea is called oolong tea. On the spectrum of fermentation slash oxidation between green tea and black tea, you'll find another traditional tea sitting in the middle. Again, this is called oolong tea. Not only does oolong tea have the most fun name to say, I dare you say it, say it. It try not to giggle or smile or just say, I just say it, say oolong. All right, you put some smile in your heart. Even if it doesn't throw one on your face, it's gonna hit you in that heart button. Now, it also has some impressive benefits and not just a fun name to say. Research published in the Journal of Nutrition put test subjects on a calorie equivalent diet and had them include either five cups of oolong tea or a control beverage. This was for the three-day study period. After measuring their metabolic rates, participants drinking oolong tea increased their energy expenditure by 2.9% compared to those drinking the control beverage, which was just water. And shout out to water, water makes everything work better. But there's something going on with oolong tea that increased their metabolic rate, that increased their energy expenditure by about 3% drinking the same amount of liquid. This was the equivalent of burning an additional 281 calories per day on average. Now, that's really remarkable because we're drinking something that is very, very, very low calorie. We're talking maybe five calories and it's helping the body to burn a substantial amount more calories, almost 300 calories a day. So, whether it's black, green, or somewhere in between, incorporating a couple cups of green tea, black tea, or oolong tea to your daily regimen can definitely be supportive of your metabolism. Now, whichever one you feel attracted to or compelled or interested in to try out, that's awesome. But most importantly, it's doing something that feels good and giving yourself permission to experiment with things, to try things out, to see what resonates with you. That's what this life is really all about but we get kind of trapped in these silos. We get trapped in our sameness. And it's because we're reaching for certainty today. And so whatever ways we can keep things certain and, and consistent, if we find any kind of peace and solace, we tend to get latched to those things and it keeps us small. We wanna be able to be expansive, to grow. This planet is so vast and beautiful and has so much so much to offer us by us getting our ticket punched to be here right now in human history, in this human experience, we don't wanna cut ourselves off from that. And so hopefully this inspires you to try one of these teas out or a couple of these teas and, and just see what feels good, see what resonates, see what you enjoy. Maybe you might find something that is really activating something in your, in your, in your psychology, in your health that has been dormant. All right, we're gonna move on to yet another tea that is surprisingly from the Camellia sinensis family. And this one is white tea. All right, white tea is gaining in popularity the last few years, but again, it's been utilized for quite some time in other traditions. Now, white tea is actually harvested from the young tea leaves of the Camellia sinensis plant when the young buds are still covered in this fine white fuzz, giving it thus the name white tea. Now listen to these benefits. A study published in the journal Nutrition and Metabolism revealed that white tea supports a healthy body composition in two ways. One, it was found to have lipolytic activity that triggers the release of fatty acids from fat cells. Two, it was also found to inhibit adipogenesis or reducing the creation of new fat cells themselves. That's pretty incredible. So those two modes of action for our metabolic health. Now, white tea could also help address a growing issue in our society today. According to a meta-analysis published in the journal Human Reproduction Update, scientists revealed that the average Western male Sperm count has declined by 50% in just 40 years. 
it's shocking. It's shocking. But fertility overall has dropped by about that same amount of time in that same amount of time. It's just one of the pieces that's leading to this equation outcome of reduced fertility as a species. And we've talked about this in previous episodes because we have an outer appearance of a large population. And this is because at this point where we have more people who are sticking around, but the birthing of new humans, that is starting to trend downward. And over the next 30, 40, 50 years, we can see some really dramatic drops in our ability to procreate as a species. And so it's scary stuff and we need to really take this more seriously. Again, this is one of our most prestigious journals addressing human reproduction, meta-analysis, looking at multiple studies, revealing the average Western male sperm count has declined by about 50% in just 40 years. There's obviously numerous reasons that are leading to this outcome. This has a lot to do with our now largely sedentary population and sedentary behavior. This has to do with endocrine disruptors that are rampant in our food supply, in our personal care products, largely xenoestrogen compounds that are fitting into estrogen receptor sites in our bodies and triggering more estrogen-related processes. And even processes like aromatization, for example, due to our rampant consumption of sugar. And aromatization is essentially a robbing of our testosterone and getting it converted into estrogen, putting it down a different pathway. And so the list goes on and on and on, but one of those reasons tying in with that is our dramatic increase in rates of type 2 diabetes and prediabetes. Here in the United States right now, about 130 million of our citizens are now type 2 diabetic or pre-diabetic. All right, and it's trending upward. And so the connection between insulin resistance, diabetes in particular, and abnormalities with our sperm and sperm count, this is proven in multiple clinical trials. And so what are some of the things that we can do? Obviously, we want to stack conditions in our favor with our movement practices, our, our sleep quality, management of stress, you know, high quality food, all those things, yes. But there are also, again, nature has been pre presenting solutions to us. And now more than ever, these are things for us to get educated about and to access. A study published in Reproductive Biomedicine looked at an animal model in this particular study to see how swiftly science-backed beverages like white tea can influence sperm count. The study titled, White Tea Consumption Restores Sperm Quality in Pre-Diabetic Rats Preventing Testicular Oxidative Damage found these results after just two months. White tea consumption improved sperm concentration and sperm quality, i.e. motility, viability, and reduced abnormalities. Overall, white tea consumption significantly improved reproductive health of the pre-diabetic rodents. The researchers stated, quote, based on the study results, white tea consumption appears to be a natural, economical, and effective strategy to counteract the deleterious effects of prediabetes on male reproductive health, unquote. Pretty profound, pretty profound. And this, again, is just a simple thing. It's been done for centuries. And having this influence over reproductive health. Now, while doing this research, I couldn't help but think, how are they collecting the semen for these rats? How are they getting the jizz from the rats i just i was very curious and it sent me down a rabbit hole that i hope no one else ever goes down and eventually i happened upon a study and this was published in the journal Theriogenology. genealogy and the study is titled high efficient and non-invasive collection of ejaculates from rats using penile vibratory stimulation all right so using the vibes to get these rats to get the to, to get them there all right so vibrators apparently they're using vibratory stimulation and these researchers were saying hey this is the best way to do it i know you were doing it another way 
this is the best way using little using little tools your little using your little your little hands <laughs> I'm sorry <laughs> using various there's invasive methods as well where they go into their bodies and collect stuff it's not as not as good you're not getting the quality so it's the it's the mature release that actually has the best viability in clinical trials so I hope you don't ever go down that rabbit hole I went down but just if you were curious how they getting the how they're getting it from the rats that's how they're doing it vibratory stimulation now an additional benefit noted with white tea is its protective effect on our dental health a 2016 study titled the anti-plaque efficacy of white tea extract mouth rinse found that a white tea based mouthwash outperformed a placebo mouthwash in inhibiting plaque formation, and reducing the proliferation of detrimental mouth bacteria strains. How cool is that? Like all of these benefits for all these different organs and organ systems, that's what's different about utilizing a blunt instrument in the form of a synthetic pharmacological intervention versus real food, versus real earth-grown beverages and things that have story tradition and we're now proving their efficacy with modern science and also another really interesting thing i thought about was you know the the doctrine of signatures in nature and the way that a plant looks how it functions it can inform us about what is good for with our bodies and so being that it's a white tea and influencing our teeth, right? Something that we essentially, you know, we view our teeth as being white, being healthy, right? A white tea relating to these, these pearlies that we have in our mouths. And also semen is white. The benefits for semen, white stuff, right? Isn't that interesting? White tea and having these benefits for these things that we attribute to be white. Now, if there's any aliens listening, you're like, my, my, my jizz is purple, man. No disrespect. All right, shout out to all the aliens listening. So we've covered gynostimity, we've covered puer, we've covered rooibos, we've covered green tea, we've covered black tea, we've covered oolong tea, we've covered white tea. And now we're at number eight on our list. And this tea is going to be new for a lot of people. It's called chanca piedra, all right? Chanca piedra tea. This is a tea that I was introduced to maybe about 16 years ago, 17 years ago. And the translation, loosely, Chanca Piedra, Chanca Piedra, stone breaker, stone breaker tea. And there's a lot of anecdotal evidence around Chanca Piedra being effective at reducing the expression of kidney stones, all right, which is a very... Again, something that's trending up in our society today for some strange reason, but also very painful, very difficult thing to deal with. And I wanted to look beyond the anecdotal data and look at what is seen in clinical trials. Well, a clinical trial published in 2018, peer-reviewed journal, utilizing Chanca Piedra as a treatment and ultrasound to measure the size of kidney stones, as well as a vast array of other biomarkers were tracked with the test subjects in this study. And the study of 56 people with kidney stones who took one cup of chanca piedra containing about 4.5 grams of chanca piedra twice daily. The researchers found that the kidney stones for these test subjects utilizing Chanca Piedra decreased in size and number in about two thirds of the participants. Not perfect, but pretty, pretty damn good. Pretty damn good. And if somebody's struggling with kidney stones, they probably wanna know about this. And so that's just one study. Another study, and this was a randomized controlled trial published in the journal of urology this is the this is the major journal looking at this issue but people don't hear about chanca piedra 
These researchers analyzed the effect of patients drinking Chanca Piedra along with shockwave lithotripsy for kidney stones. So this is utilizing sound to break down the stones. This is a very common treatment. It's non-invasive and very effective. You just think about that for a moment. Using sound as a therapy, right? Ultrasound is a therapy. The utilizing sound, vibrations, vibes, to have therapeutic effects. So utilizing Chanka Piedra and this shockwave therapy. The researchers determined that drinking Chaka Piedra along with the sound shockwave treatment resulted in a higher stone-free rate for study participants versus the shockwave treatment alone. The results were just better. The results were better. Shockwave treatment did its thing, but it was better. And various, they, they had studied different arms, different biomarkers, and I read through all of it, and it just kept on making things, if not a little bit, a lot better, as far as the outcomes for people who are struggling with kidney stones. Other peer-reviewed studies indicate that Chanka Piedra is effective in improving liver function, and improving fasting blood sugar as well. All right, so this is another story T backed up by peer-reviewed evidence to have in your superhero utility belt for when you or somebody that you care is about needs it. The data exists. We have solutions out here. Very safe. That's another thing the researchers kept pointing back to, safe. Safe profile versus some of the other stuff that we do. So again, adding this to your superhero utility belt. We're going to move on to number nine. And this T is rapidly growing in popularity today. It's been utilized for thousands of years yet again. But in, in this particular form, utilizing it as a T is a lot newer for a lot of people. Now, this T is actually in the ginger family, which ginger tea in of itself is a powerhouse. But within the ginger family, you'll find turmeric. A study published in the European Journal of Nutrition uncovered that compounds in turmeric can downregulate inflammatory cytokines and upregulate the activity of adiponectin and other satiety-related hormones. And adiponectin is a satiety hormone that has this unique ability to shift stored body fat from the viscera, more dangerous region, belly fat region, to the subcutaneous area where it's more protective where it's more safe for the body to kind of store and utilize whenever it's called for. So that's one of the interesting things about adiponectin. In addition, scientists at the Department of Neurology at USC found that one of the active ingredients in turmeric, curcumin, is able to help eliminate amyloid plaque from the brain, slow down the aging of our neurons, and excavate heavy metals from our system as well and in addition reduce inflammation in the brain pretty remarkable stuff again this is going to be new for some people utilizing turmeric in the form of a tea but turmeric lattes are on the streets turmeric lattes are one of the most popular things growing in popularity right now and utilizing turmeric as a beverage now earlier i mentioned the remarkable angiogenesis phenomenon when talking about the development of cancer cells, basically developing their own blood supply, creating new blood vessels as angiogenesis to pull in nutrients to help them to grow. And there are foods and herbs that are clinically proven to work as an anti-angiogenesis functioning nutrient source. So cutting off the nutrient supply for cancer cells selectively, intelligently. And one of those is turmeric. It's one of the most remarkable things that again, discussing this with the president of the Angiogenesis Foundation out of Harvard, Dr. William Lee, a good friend, and turmeric is in that top three in its anti-angiogenesis property. So if we're talking about anti-cancer, yeah, yeah. Turmeric has also been found to improve insulin sensitivity, which is anti-cancer, reduce blood fats, another anti-cancer profile, and directly act upon fat cells themselves. So it has the ability to actually target fat cells and get them to 
empty their contents to reduce in size. Plus, research published in the Journal of Ethnopharmacology points to turmeric's potential in reducing severity of both anxiety and depression. Wow. Whole system, whole body wellness. One of my favorite sources at home, I always keep this on my shelf, for a turmeric latte you can make at home is from Organifi Gold. So Organifi's gold blend, the highlighted ingredient, of course, is turmeric, but also it has ginger. Also, it has cinnamon. And both of those have remarkable influence on our blood sugar levels, on insulin sensitivity, on brain health. But in addition, it also has some reishi as well, medicinal mushroom, which reishi is well noted, again, in peer-reviewed data, to be effective as an immunomodulator and also to improve our sleep quality. All right, so definitely check out the Organifi Gold. Go to Organifi.com forward slash model. That's O-R-G-A-N-I-F-I.com forward slash model. You get 20% off, 20% off their gold product, but also the Organifi Green Blend, their Red Juice Blend. This is all based on earth-grown nutrients, low temperature processed, organic ingredients they're doing stuff the right way and so to to utilize some of these benefits from turmeric and a lot of folks who utilize organifi gold it, it's become a habit for folks to kind of drink it drink it in the evening as they're winding down they know that for a lot of folks they'll share that it improves their sleep quality and so definitely check them out organifi.com forward slash model for 20 percent off and now we've reached our final t in this master class looking at some of the most remarkable benefits of a variety of teas from various places around the world and the peer reviewed data to affirm their efficacy, but also the long tradition of these teas. And the next one is one of my favorites, been utilizing for many years, is called Yerba Mate. All right, Yerba Mate. Now, right out of the gate, researchers sought out to compare the antioxidant capacity of Yerba Mate versus green tea and found their antioxidant power to be similar. Their findings were published in the Journal of Agricultural and Food Chemistry, and it also revealed that the majority of polyphenols in yerba mate were not catechins like green tea, but other robust antioxidants as well as xanthins and micronutrients. Now yerba mate finds its home based in South America. And again, we're looking at teas from all over the globe, and each one of these teas is going to have a different nutrient profile, different flavor profile. But I have a, a friend who's from Argentina, and I was doing a talk one day, and I mentioned Yerba Mate. This was years ago, you know, maybe over 10 years ago. And then I just saw her light up, and I'm just like, what's up? What's up, Debbie? What's going on? What's going on in her mind? She told me later that Yerba Mate, like, they drink it, they have a gourd. It's like a whole thing. And I was like, oh, like I'm, I got a touch point here for the authenticity. Like, let me get this real traditional experience. And so it's something that's really integrated in her culture being from Argentina. Shout out to Debbie. Shout out to Debbie. All right. Now, moving on, we got a randomized crossover study. So this is where study participants are utilizing both the intervention and also the placebo experience. So a randomized crossover study cited in the journal Nutrition and Metabolism found that giving one gram capsules of ground yerba mate to healthy men and women right before exercise led to significantly increased fatty acid oxidation and energy expenditure that's pulled from actual fat. The test subjects burn up to 24% more fat during moderate intensity exercise with the mate supplement. Pretty cool. Another three-month study conducted with type 2 diabetics and featured in the Journal of the American College of Nutrition demonstrated that test subjects who consumed 11 ounces of yerba mate three times a day had significantly lower levels of fasting blood sugar and hemoglobin A1C at the end of the study period. Now, hemoglobin A1C is one of the best markers we have for looking at our blood sugar management over time. All right, so seeing short-term and long-term influence on improving blood glucose levels for people with 
type 2 diabetes. This is so remarkable. So remarkable. Now, Mate also appears to be a mate. Spelled the same. Got a little accent on the end, but a mate for your heart. Studies featured in the journal Applied Physiology, Nutrition, and Metabolism and the journal Hospital Nutrition revealed that regularly drinking yerba mate significantly reduces the risk of cardiovascular diseases. So powerful, so powerful. So there's a plethora of other benefits, a plethora of other teas, and this masterclass is really targeting 10 of the most clinically proven and also the most accessible like we live in such a cool time where we have access to these wonderful tea varieties. But a couple of important tips that I want you to know in the tea sphere is that many of the popular teas on store shelves have very notable levels of heavy metals and pesticides. And in particular, even if they're organic, there's still notable levels of heavy metals and a lot of teas. So I want you to be mindful of that. And pesticides should not even be a part of this conversation. If you're not getting organic or wildcrafted teas, just don't do it because you're getting a piping hot cup of problems in addition to the benefits that you're trying to get. So quality matters, all right? Quality matters. And also, one of the most important things I want you to know about so you don't make this tea mistake, a study published in the journal Environmental Science and Technology titled Plastic Tea Bags Release billions of microparticles and nanoparticles into tea found that those fancy pants bags of teas like the little sack that it comes in when you're seeping your teas is putting microplastics into your tea not okay we got to be done with that all right so there are technologies that are using different types of mesh but traditionally we're going to see processes where there are you know, strainers, for example, even I remember making the yerba mate early on, I had the loose tea leaves and I had this like tea ball that it goes into. And also the teas from Peak, they're utilizing this crystallization, this patented technology to make these tea crystals that you just pour in and you can easily stir. And so they're already kind of brewed for you in a sense. And the, the nutrient profile is really locked in. And so there's so many different ways to go about this to avoid these microplastics. It's not cool. It's not okay. So we want to upgrade our awareness around microplastics in our teas. And another thing is being mindful when we're, when we're drinking these teas, be mindful of the temperature because some of these teas have a delicate profile and high heat can damage some of the benefits that you're trying to get from them. And so if you can be more aware of the temperature that you're using, you know, boiling hot water into a lot of these teas is not the ideal way to go. And I know my wife being from Kenya, she wants she wants to feel some pain. She wants that tea to be so hot. It's just a thing. It could be 90 degrees in Kenya. They've been outside, it's hot, they're sweating. Hot tea, all right? It is integrated into the culture, all right? So she likes stuff to be hot, but over time I've helped to really modulate and manage just how hot stuff is getting and actually we got this really cool uh tea kettle that has share it has a temperature on it and so she's the one who actually picked it out i was like well, we don't need all that but she was like no it's, it's got this fancy thing and so but i love it because i can actually see the temperature at which i'm utilizing for teas and coffees and things like that hey if you like this video make sure to check out this video right here to up level your health today fat in foods does not directly translate to the fat on our bodies right storage fat or structural fats, but there are specific fats that do contribute to the performance and rebuilding your structural fats in your brain.